Now, if this is a familiar view to you that is trapped inside walls or looking at corners because navigating your interior in your SketchUp model is so damn difficult, the next six tips are for you. So number one, you absolutely need to use a scroll wheel mouse. So a left click, right click, and scroll wheel button in the middle. Now, not only does the scroll wheel itself let you go in and out, so zooming in and out is really easy, but when you hold down the scroll wheel, it actually lets you orbit around. This can be such a game changer when it comes to navigating your model and getting unstuck from these sticky situations. Next, you want to get in the habit of saving scenes. Now, I have a whole other video on how to save a scene, but essentially, when you have saved scenes, it's so much easier to just, let's go back to where I can see everything as I wanted to. Now, obviously, saving scenes is really important for kind of getting any final visualizations from your model, but definitely make sure you keep in mind that save some working scenes. So you might have a scene where you've saved it where you can get a good overview. Maybe you have a scene that acts almost as like a base point or a base view for every room in a design, but saving some scenes that don't even actually matter for a visualization purpose, but just to help you navigate the model can can really make your life easier. Next, you want to get into the habit of using the position camera tool. Now, if you have your large tool set activated, it will be a button, but if you don't, if you just go to the camera and say position camera, your little cursor is going to turn into this little man with an X under him. Basically, now I can actually go in and click and it will position the camera as if I'm a person standing in this spot. This makes your life so much easier when you are working in an interior because otherwise you're gonna find it really challenging of getting your position manually just to the right place where you need to look in the right direction. So definitely get used to the position camera. Now you'll notice, let me do this again, if I click position camera, it automatically also then turns on the look around tool. Again, this is so helpful because all you have to do is click position camera and click and drag until you look around in the right direction so you get all of the, the view that you want. Now, another similar tool to use is the walk tool. So what this tool does is lets you click and hold and walk around. Now, there's some really good features to this tool. So let's go back to our scene. And now let's go back to position camera. And let's click over here. And now let's use the walk tool. And we can actually make our way through the architecture without having to constantly, constantly re-figure out where we are. Now, the good news with the walk tool is that it recognizes objects. It doesn't let me walk over this island or walk through walls. It doesn't let me back into walls or back into different pieces of furniture. This is called collision detection. Now you can disable it if you just hold down the alt key. There's a little handy cheat sheet in the bottom corner where SketchUp is telling you what to do. And you can also use the shift key to kind of move around either vertically or sideways. But on its own, the walk tool is really handy because it lets you walk through a space as if it is an actual architectural interior space. Now the next tip is all about what if you are positioning the camera and you are walking around and you're looking around and you still can't really get a good view of your interior. This is when you wanna adjust the field of view. So for example, say I go to camera, position camera, and let's go back to that little corridor here because I think it really highlights what's going on. Maybe this is you know, not showing everything as I would want. It's not really showing off the, the effect of this kind of design of the space. Now to play with this, I'm going to go to camera and say field of view. And basically to activate the field of view, I need to click 
and drag my mouse. I'm either going to drag it down or up. And essentially, this is going to change the way the camera is looking at the space. So it could be almost like, you know, a, a really flattened version of the image or like a fish fish bowl eye, fish, fish bowl lens, or I can't remember, fish eye lens. There we go. So it really helps you kind of either view more of the space or less of the space so you have a really good understanding of what's going on. This is particularly helpful when you're trying to get a view of a small space. Now, if you do it too much, you can distort the image and it doesn't really look real anymore, similar to the fish islands, but it does help it where if you are in a small space, you can play around with the field of view just to maximize actually what you can see as you're navigating your model. Now, so far, we've just been going through the space and kind of navigating it according to the tools that we have and doing our best to kind of get to where we needed to be. Now, what happens when you need to kind of have that overall picture of the interior, but things are getting in the way and you're kind of stuck with only being able to look around as if it's, you know, a built environment and it has all of the, the things in it. In that case, I recommend really making sure you're organized with your tags. So for right now, in this model, it's a really simple model in terms of, you know, there's a lot of imported tags, so things that I've gotten from 3D Warehouse or other places. Um, I've put all of those tags on the imported folder, and I've made my own folder where I've put things um, for the model itself. Now, this is just a kind of a single story design, so I've just done it where it's a ceiling and a walls tag. Now, you can get super organized with tags, um, and I definitely recommend that if you're you know, having to work on something complex or having to work on something with someone else. But for right now, the ceiling and walls tags can be really helpful. So if I do ceiling and turn it off, this means I now have this bird's eye view again that I can really look into and understand what's going on in the model. Now, I say that uh, assuming you have modeled a ceiling. This is one of my pet peeves of seeing people not model ceilings for interior renderings. So definitely make sure you model ceilings or model um, you know, the full architecture of a space. Now, similarly, you can make it where you wanna turn off walls as well. Again, this can be really helpful. I recommend turning off just walls where you can still leave um, any doors and windows so you kind of know where their location is. But you can imagine sometimes, you know, if I needed to go through and detail out some of the kind of cabinetry in this butler's pantry area, I might be needing to see things in other parts of the design to make them consistent. So I'm navigating around a lot, but things like the walls just get in the way. So I turn them off and make life simpler. Of course, when you're done navigating, all you have to do is turn them back on and click on a save scene and you can get back into looking at it as if it is a built environment. So those are my top tips for navigating an interior in a SketchUp model. I hope that helps. If you think I left off a tip, please let me know in the comments below and thanks for watching. If you like that video, then click to subscribe for more videos all about software and digital skills for interior design.